Dianic Bay. And this is what you could call a historic place for a lot of different reasons. One of those places where history overlaps from the native people all the way through the nuclear age. Everything comes together here. And we're going to go out and we're going to hit some blackfish and whatever else happens to be around on this episode of Fishing History. Nyanic Beach, which was once a hot spot, you know, and they put the railroad track between the town and the ocean. Pretty much cutting the town off from the ocean in a way. So, so you want to hear what Amtrak wants to do and there's an uproar? Amtrak wants to take that chain link fence and make it a 16 foot high wall all the way through town. And so everybody who's there that can see through or over the chain link fence. You won't see over anymore. And that's the thing. They're the railroad, and they have federal power behind them. They can just make these crazy decisions. Black sea bass are a species I typically don't fish for, but I'm out with a guy who's been running the sound for 35 years and truly knows how to live. Fishing, foraging, growing, hunting, spear fishing. Jeff Kaz can do it all, and we're going to get into some fish that we're going to then take back and prepare in a quite unique way. So let's get into them. We're going to attack the sea bass today, and we're using these high-low jigs that are made by a local young guy. Dan, hand me one of those uh, weights. It's a bait rig. Beat it up. Interesting. That's the quarry. That's the quarry. Nice old sea bass with big old teeth. Well, not really that big, but. A little small. It went back in the water. <laughs> it feels like you might have come off, or it's small. Like zero fight. So setting up in 70 to 90 feet of water with uh, boulders on the bottom, we're basically running up and down this structure. Imagine it as a washboard, and as you drop your baits down, the fish are hiding behind them out of the current, and that's where you pick the fish up. We're using clam and squid on the high-low rigs, and it's proven to be quite effective as we're pretty much pounding these fish for the five hours that we were out. What are we looking at here? Oh, he's, he's throbbing. He's pumping. Oh, yeah. We got Mr. Sea Bass. Did we catch two? Yep. I have, yeah. Oh, boy. Not a big one. However, he was game. The quarry. And now, isn't that a pretty fish though? It's a really pretty fish. But you go back in the water. So it doesn't count this one, but that counts, right? Yep. Yep. So that's 17. If you're over that, that's all you got. It just has to be a fin. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah that's a good one I think he's a measurable one no Jeff what do you think little John with the snap man one 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 whacked him I like I to play him out a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I 
I got color. Ooh. Ooh, that's a... Go ahead, we need the net. Yeah, well... I'll just bring them in, Johnny. Give me that leader, I'll haul them in in one. No, he peed on me. They're, they're really a pretty fish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got to probably net that. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah that's a probably netter. Yeah, shut the f***. It's more fun breaking the ball. <laughs> How'd that look? Nah, he ain't that big. Oh yeah. That was kind of like you said, Jeff. He hit, like, felt like a nibble. I set the hook and then it wasn't really anything. And then all of a sudden it must have turned and gone back down. And it was like, oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Net porgy. I'm gonna debate that I don't have any bait on it. Yeah, pull it in. It only takes you a second. There we go. Stand man on. Oh, stand man off. Felt good for a second. Oh, there we go. Gotta measure this guy. This here is eighteen. <laughs> Not a dollar, but a I've got this nonchalant sitting on the gunnel style going. Hank has got one right here. Having trouble getting it off. He bit a small one. Ooh, this guy feels like he's got some throb going on. He's throbbing. Sound like me now. Oh yeah, he digging. Johnny come leave. Oh yeah, we gotta net him. No. Yeah. He been no, I don't think we got a net him. Uh, just reach down and grab him. Make it. He be a, close. He's a close one. You look uh, striper? Yes. Yeah, Stripers are. It's like saw. Yeah, it's, it's like sandpaper. He's back to the real. Got the net right here when, we, when it's time. It's going to be time. Beep. 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 Oh yeah, this is a good one. Oh Jesus. Oh yeah. That's keeper. Big on the camera. Oh look at a color on him. Yeah. And Kaz, you were saying that the when you pull a male out, another male goes into the spot. But if there's no males, they turn female? Or wait. They're... Yeah, the females will turn male. He's, uh, how long is the thing? 19 to yeah. end. He's 19. Can I just get him in there, bleed him? That's, uh, 10. Where were you, uh, Like it feels pretty heavy to me. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'll take that. Doubles are fun. Wow. This this guy's fighting me back. He's not just coming up. Gone. 
I'll first made them for you. Wow. It's this game. I'm hoping. Oh, I see him. He's Double! Up. He got two. <laughs> Double! You want to give that camera? I got it. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> so after a full tide of fishing down the sound, we headed back into Nyanic to Jeff's house to prepare our early dinner so we could get out and hit the night tide for stripers and blues. Now, Nyanic Bay, as I said earlier, is just steeped in history. Named after the Nyanic people with their great chief Ninigret and surrounded by modernity now with Millstone Nuclear Power Plant off to the east, Black Point on the west, and it's beautiful early 20th, late 19th century cottages, and of course, the railroad track, the great transportation invention of the 19th century, severing Niantic's beachfront from the town itself, which features some really classic mid-19th century hotels. But it's really a great place to go for fishing and fun, and we're heading in to enjoy our black sea bass prepared a special way. So we've got ourselves 10 nice black sea bass ranging up to about 21 inches. And Jeff is filleting these now. Now he worked as a young man on what, Jeff, the Blackhawk? Uh, yeah, a number of charter fishing boats. Right. So you can see how quick he's going in on this blackfish. Black sea bass. That is what I meant to say. Black sea bass. Yeah, that out post production. Yeah, we'll work on that. So Make he's sure you coming in. The camera a lot too. Yeah. And, and he's just go. coming back right next to the dorsal. Oh, here's your striper. Right but he's blocking it. At the ribs, you're feeling the ribs with the tip of the going knife, here. right? Yep. And then going from the there, ribs. yep, going over the ribs. Now, because you're talking, I caught a couple of the ribs, but I can cut them out in Tip post production. Typically, a clean fillet, though. And now, he's got the collar here that he's going to do. Oh, yeah. He's taking out the collar, which will be grilled. Will be grilled. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of crushed red pepper. And right on the grill, skin side down for about 15 minutes. We're going to get some of that. I'm going to throw them some guts here in a second. We got a, we got a, a pet striper under the dock right now. We're going to be going for wild stripers after a little break. I have to say I caught him last week. Did you? He's 29 and a half inches. <laughs> he's, in the slot. he's in the slot. And I couldn't keep him. I no, he's, he's your pet. Striper. You're like, I, I want him so bad, but. So there's the collar. Now you're cleaning that out. Beautiful. Got dark meat too. Right. So if that is a chicken breast. Right. That is a chicken thigh. There we go. Look at him. Oh, he just vacuum cleaned it right up. Look at him down there. That's a 29. Jeff says he caught him. Not long ago. He just came in and scarfed that up. The skin? Yeah. He vacuum cleaned it right up. There's a bunch of other pieces of meat. There he is. He's right under us. See him? Straight there. Oh yeah. He's a, There's he, a bunch of pieces of meat out here. He likes hanging on that. Oh he's he's gonna vacuum clean the rest of it. And my uh Homemade oh. ground cayenne pepper. All right. And uh, you basically just pat them dry, put them in a bowl with some olive oil mm -hmm. and crushed reds if you have it. Right. And make it happen. Make it happen. And then they're going to go on the grill. When you flip it over, sometimes we used to call them birds. Right. Bird oh bird. my God, yeah. Looks like a crow or a seagull. I used to cook them this way, right? but then the meat pulls off when they stick. So right. now I just cook them this way and basically bake them on the grill. And then you just minutes. peel that meat right off. And it's, you can see the dark meat in there. It's I know. It's literally like a chicken thigh. I mean, it's like a fish version of a chicken thigh. 
Very cool. And uh, fresh mussels from the dock. Like I've got my own mussel farm. Beautiful. It grew naturally there. As uh, good as it gets. I too have a mussel farm in my house, but it's connected to the old man. I got the saw seated up. We're just going to let those steam in there. <laughs> He's got a muscle farm. No answer to that. There was nothing to say there. It's we're just going to we're gonna, we're gonna let the likers I like. Here, we're gonna hide. Uh, if you want another one out, the grill starts on high. Clean it off. Turn the middle down to low. Skin down. The, the, yeah, birds. Down the birds. The birds. Who is their big player with numbers? Well, bye bye. <laughs> and we'll see and them. Probably, probably 400 degrees. Okay. Yeah, back then. I don't know. Until they look good. That's 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 the way. All right. We're going to go for the unveiling of the fish wings. Oh, yes. Oh. These guys have just opened up, and you can see this is both white and dark meat on the birds, as you were telling me, Jeff. Oh, a bird, bird loses down, a wing. Bird down. They're perfectly done. This is something people haven't seen. You know, this, this is the first time I've heard about eating the collar of a black sea bass, and you said you could also do it with tuna, yep. uh, totog, or blackfish, uh -huh. yeah. Pretty much any fish that you fillet, um, any fish that you fillet, there's all that meat left around the neck that you can't get in there and cut because of the bones. But you need a serrated knife to do it. All right, and that's the cool thing too, is you, you know, we're living in a world where we want to be sustainable. Well, this this is a good way of making I'm sure. I'm that for 35 years of fishing, I threw this out. Yeah, so that's... Only the last three years have I kept it. Yeah, I feel the so same I mean, way. Like, like this right here is how you make sure you're maximizing the animal that you have harvested. Yes, sir. Totally right. cool. Let's eat. All right. So we're all out here. Unveiling of the mussels. Oh, oh very nice. Oh, yeah. If a Martin and you could see those, they would be very happy. <laughs> they would be. They would be very nice. <laughs> they would prepare them on a piece of driftwood. <laughs> yeah. All right, try out. And we got some rice. Yes, sir. The arroz con, con pesca. And are these, uh, is this your sauce, Jeff, like this last time? This is our sauce, yeah, like last time. It's, uh, your hair it's, the, well, it's a combination of San Marzano and Amish paste. And a different kind of plum, and then whatever other tomatoes are left over. I think we're out of it. Freaking tight right now. Jasmine. Jasmine rice. Smells good. Beautiful. Jasmine. Jasmine there. So as Jeff pointed out, it is embarrassing that for all these years of my life, I have forgotten about the collar and the protein value there, as well as the flavor, because these fish birds or collars are uh, a mixture of black and white meat or dark and white meat very very good and you got to do a little work to get the meat out but it's like eating a crab or a lobster and after this awesome dinner that we shared together we're gonna head back out and hunt for some big stripers into the darkness with some bluefish thrown in so this was just a great day and I hope that you will try to use the collar of whatever fish you're catching and filleting because it really is a respectful thing to do to the animal so with that said like and subscribe and it was great bringing you another episode of fishing historic places <laughs>